that's enough to make a guy sick. I am never gonna financially recover from this. The way this whole project has gone, two steps forward, 13 steps back. It gets worse. Okay, I don't have any paint stirrers, so what I do have in your hand is a window shim. Listen, the key to success at stuff like this is knowing just enough to believe that you can do something, but not enough to know why you shouldn't do something. Making my ears tickle. You know, we used to refer to this truck as Joan Rivers because, well, she had a lot of work done to her and she's still rougher than a stucco bathtub. She pulls the lid and the first thing she does is what? Sniff it, because Bondo's Big old so sniff good. of Bondo. Welcome back to Crosstair Garage and Salvage. This week I'm teaching Caitlin how to paint a truck. Now, when we bought this truck months ago, my plan was to do a $200 driveway paint job episode, but as our president has reminded us so frequently recently, Bidenomics is fast at work, which means we're doing a $400 driveway paint job on the C10. So join us this week. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and head on over to CrossTheGarageAndSalvage.com oh, to grab yourself a t-shirt or a hat or a sweatshirt, because or sticker. it's getting cold. and. Uh, we don't want you guys, you know, getting your little toesies all out of shape out there. So, dress appropriately for the weather. Grab yourself a sweatshirt. I don't know why I'm talking about the toesies. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back. Did you miss me? Didn't miss your voice. It sounds like a banshee Shh. screaming in the night. Shh. Caitlin's got the bed sanded. We're going to get it prime today so that it stops flash rusting while we continue working on the cab. Caitlin, grab a can of paint, get her shook up. Let's do this. Making my ears tickle. We're just getting it cleaned up, degreased, dusted. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Boom. Don't do stuff like that, Kayla. Why? Because then you leave dirt and a pattern on it, and it ends up showing through the paint two coats later. It actually looks nice like this. Like the gray. Just think about how nice it's going to look once it's actually done. We're going to go ahead and get some of these high spots from where we were welding these holes knocked down hammered out. Okay. Before we paint it, Caitlin's grabbing the trim off real quick. And uh, the reason we're going to do that is so oh. we've got the high spots knocked down and then we can go ahead and bondo, light coat of bondo over the low spots before we do a final paint. So. Okay, Caitlin, so with a dry rag now, we're just giving it one quick last dust down here. It'd be nice if we had a tack cloth, but we don't have a tack cloth. And I'm not gonna run and get one. What are you? That's genius. I'm not even mad about that. Show the camera what you're doing. Using the whole paper towel roll. Start on that end, and start on this end. I'm just giving it a dusting to begin with, okay? And don't paint any letters or anything. Woo! I might need a mask. Yeah, we need masks. Hold on. Time out. Okay, we got some masks. Stole these from a blue-haired fascist in the airport the other day, so we're all set. Got a whole pack of them. Right. You can't be the free foodie. I know. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. Wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think 
that it is. I can still taste it. Man, I don't like the way that is laying down, but that's a high fill primer. You're gonna have to get a little bit closer. We're wasting a lot of paint there. Yeah. All right, let's back up and see who did it better. You. Mine looks more. You got a bunch of lines in your. Mine looks more ghetto. Like I. Just... This will dry pretty quick because it's a. We're using a high fill primer, so we're really building the surface to cover any imperfections. So don't touch it. Touching on the corner where it's on the inside. Go to the other side and start putting the first coat on there, and I'll touch this up where I need to fill it in. Guys, I've, I've emptied some paint cans before, but I don't think I've ever got a paint can sounding that empty. Okay, now we need to touch up the other side because it's pretty thin. Kaylin, what's that sky remind you of? Our paint job. <laughs> it does look vaguely like, yeah, I can see the streaks. So yeah, next step is sanding, obviously. Last can. Shake it up while you're doing it. Literally just air. Spread it in my face. Well, don't do that. What? Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of a protective coat. Don't touch. But you can see here where we're going to need the bondo, right where we ground out those welds we covered in. Looks like that one we actually might need to grind off a little bit more three days later well guys this is what we're facing here today another rainy day northern ohio i guess i could get some wet sanding done on the uh, bed but instead i'm going to work in here where it's dry <sighs> oh man that hurt look this garage has been a mess absolute mess and i'm was tired of looking at it tired of walking around in it so Got my workbench cleaned up, got the floor here cleaned up, got the garbage taken out, got everything put away. Well, I mean, except for that. That's some new garbage. Got a water pump lot on the AC condenser. That's got to go to the garbage. And this was, well, this was lunch yesterday. That's got to go to the garbage, too. So anyways, most of it's cleaned up. Okay, if I'm being honest, almost none of it's cleaned up. I just feel better about moving stuff around and making different piles. But what I'm going to do today is get this guy sanded and uh, I'm going to have to take a look at this door. I have a skin that I was thinking I would replace the bottom with, but the bottom edge is actually really clean. So I'm going to get in here, I'm going to grind all this out, figure out how much Bondo and junk they've got in here, figure out if this is anything I can salvage. But this whole thing's got to get sanded down because we got to get a coat of primer on everything. This, you know, we used to refer to this truck as Joan Rivers because, well, she had a lot of work done to her and she's still rougher than a stucco bathtub, which 
you can see here is the case. We gotta get this all cleaned up. I think I'm gonna remove the drip rails and just clean that up with getting rid of the drip rail. I don't know, definitely getting rid of this trim. We got rid of it on the bed and it looks so much better. So we'll see what we do, but that's the next thing to do. But before I do that, I'm gonna run over to Hobo Freight while it's raining. I gotta get a new uh, gun for the sprayer. Cause if we're gonna get this thing painted in this episode, well, it's as simple as that, I need a gun. At least my hay's dry. Nope, that's ruined too. Awesome. So the one day that I had off this week, Joy's fuel pump went out in her Cadillac. So of course I had to drop the tank. Get that thing out. I don't know why these Cokes are in here. I don't drink Coke. Nobody in my family drinks Coke, but I got a fridge full of Coke. So I had to drop the tank and fight with that all day and Anyhow, got that replaced. She's back on the road, so that was a whole day that I thought I was going to be working on the C10 here. So since Caitlin did the work on the bed while I was in Africa, I guess I'm going to do the work on the cab while she's at school and playing sports and having fun without me. Yeah. Okay. Good talk. Well, I gotta say, I have seen better, but it's coming together nicely. It's at least got a smooth finish. I think it'll lay down primer okay on it. I guess I'm gonna start on a fender, which means I'm gonna have to pull off trim here that I haven't pulled off yet. So, you know, Caitlin's still at school. Uh, it's my day off today, and I'm just trying to get this done because I gotta, I gotta be honest with you guys, I never figured, like if I was just doing this truck to do it and turn it and flip it and get rid of it, we bought it back in February, it's now almost October, and if I was doing this without having to do the YouTube stuff and without having to teach Caitlin, this thing would have been turned and burned within 60 days and I would have had this done, but, um, you know, you guys are pretty demanding, so... You get what you get, and it takes as long as it takes. I guess that's the lesson here. But this obviously is just one of those things where we couldn't wait any longer. It needed to get done, and if I didn't get into it, it wasn't going to get done. So, guys, I'm I'm just cutting into this with a 120 grit paper here. Um, turn that over; it's easier. 120 grit uh, paper on a DA sander, and it is really making. The cut we need so it's working out really well Let's see if we can get it done so those screws didn't want to come out um we weren't going to use that anyways
Well guys, you're kind of seeing how it's done here. I'm not gonna bore you with a time lapse on the whole rest of the truck. But I did want to give you a walk around here before I take the shine off all this. Um, just a reminder to you what we're dealing with here. This truck's been painted once before. Top is real rough. Um, I had to put cab corners in here. Taught Caitlin to weld, just put the cab corners in both sides. We got the frame cleaned up. Um, we dropped the back end seven inches. We dropped the front end five inches. As far as body goes, this uh, this door is gonna be our worst spot here and I still gotta figure out exactly what I'm doing with that. But um, you can see it doesn't fit right. And if you look here, the body line is not correct there. And it's definitely not correct down there below where they repaired it. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here with this door, but it's going to have to get fixed. <laughs> and I don't know what that's going to take. But, um, you know, when we bought this thing eight months ago, my plan was to get to this stage in a few months and do a $300 driveway paint job on a C10, show you what it's like. But, you know, as you've been hearing from our president, Bidenomics is working for you. So this is a $500 driveway paint job this time around. And that's actually because uh, I had to buy new DA sander. I uh, actually bought two of those. Went out and got real fancy with a 1999 sprayer from uh, Hobo Freight. This stuff ain't cheap. That's like $8 a can. And you can see that we've used some of that already. So I'm talking, you know, supplies from from taping everything off and covering it to paper to mixing tubs to um, drop cloths to basically everything we need to make this work including the paint well guys here's what the door looks like and it is not good in fact i didn't even finish stripping that apart but I've already come to the decision that before I do anything more with that door I'm gonna get on marketplace and see if I can't just find a new door new door can't be a hundred dollars hundred and fifty dollars maybe hundred and fifty dollars be well worth it not to have to try and fix all that and the fact is that the patch I've got, I think, only comes up a little bit higher than the line that they've got here now. So, you know, if I only get up to here, I've got all this junk up here left to, to deal with. I'm going to be better off just checking on a new door. So, one week later. Well, I didn't know what we were going to do about this door, but I got my way to a soccer game last night. For our youngest and <clears throat> I remembered about three months ago I'd gone to look at a 1930 Model A and uh, pulled into the wrong driveway uh, Google Maps took me right next door anyhow the fellow's driveway I pulled into uh, has garage door open and he had a couple of square bodies sitting in the garage and well I went back over there and I said uh, you look like a guy who's got lots of parts for these trucks he says oh man sure do I Took me upstairs in his shop at a second story garage full of parts full of stuff i said i'm looking for a couple of doors he said brother i got you covered right there instead of uh not brand new but recently refurbished doors including rust treatment down in the bottom of them so they won't rust out at the bottom driver's side and passenger side gonna have to switch all the hardware over windows uh, seals, all that stuff. Gonna have to get all this switched out. Not sure. Might use my handles. I don't even know if the keys I've got unlock these doors, so we'll see about that. But it solves the problem that we had with patching up these guys here. Those already have the the uh, the three holes here for the smaller size mirrors, so we're in good shape there. Mask it off. Pull the grill and stuff out. Oh, we gotta pull that bumper off there too. That thing's crookeder than a guy selling steaks out of the back of his truck going door to door.
you know there's a point at every project <laughs> and we're almost there where you're done tearing stuff down man it feels good to get to that spot feels even better the first time you put something back so we're looking forward to that we're on our way well on our way where are you going Where are you going? All this good hay that we let get wet before we fed it to our goats. Oh wow, those tomatoes really came in, didn't they? More work, less tomato picking. Hungry. We literally just ate. I literally made some tomatoes. Okay, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to go finish cleaning up that cowl. How many of those tomatoes are you about to eat? The rest. No, I already ate half of them. You're going to have a stomach ache after eating all those tomatoes. Wait, what? It's our baby. Oops. I'm just like eating one big tomato. All right. Now we clean. Now I guess I got to stand that right there below the window. I'll do that while Caitlin starts wiping down the hood. Caitlin, let's wipe. Let's wipe. The truck. What do you think we're gonna wipe? Oh, I thought you said it's white. No. Oh. What's that smelly stuff? That smelly stuff that smells smelly? Mm -hmm. Big there. old hit. Oh. Shake it up. <laughs> really tedious part starts, which is masking off. Actually, of let's one. just take the doors off and we'll mask the inside with paper. What? what, what? Why are we masking? We're going to have to mask it off so we don't get overspray inside the truck. But let's remove the doors. We're going to have to mask the windshield oh. and the rear window. We'll leave the door on, so we just have to mask here. I'm sensing you holding off and masking off the entire inside. Is that what you're saying? Uh, we could do that, but eventually we're going to have to yes, eventually we'll have to mask inside because we're going to have to paint the inside of the door jams. Yeah, but taking the door off is going to leave a huge space. I guess for priming it, we could just throw paper over that window because we need to protect the window. Why? Because with that glass has to go in the new doors. Like, a completely different glass. No, it's not. This this frame goes in that door, so you have two window pieces that you put in. This opening is the same. Okay. So let's get great. Let's get paper and tape. We'll just cover the window. Then I think we're going to Grandma Grandpa's tonight for dinner, so. Let's okay, see if where's we can the get paper? That done. Can we get like a rolly thingy and put like a toilet roll and put this on it and then stick it on some of our walls? So, and then it just keeps continually releasing out, and Mom's put like her grocery list on there, and like we can like draw on there. I think it's a I good I don't idea. think that's what we're gonna do with that paper.
Guys, taping is not a science. It's an art. And if that's the case, I may have just created the Mona Lisa of back window tape jobs. Just call me the Michael Jordan of taping. Wait, what? <laughs> now look what I did up in the front though. I just got without a razor blade. Oh, right what about right over here. all that? are you doing? Ah, come on. It's not like I'm using it as a headband or anything. No, you're definitely not. My eyebrows. Do my eyelids. Get this thing coated once with high build primer and then we'll be probably done for the evening. Oh, we gotta get that bumper off of there still. thing we need to do here real quick, Caitlin, before we go to Grandma and Grandpa's, is you can see this high build primer is pretty rough. We need to get a quick hand sand on this. What? And I... It's easy here for... Yeah. Why do we need to do it now? Because it's got to be done so that I can we can bondo on these little spots up here. So let's move these doors and we'll just each take a side. We'll just do them real quick, break down the, the heavy high build primer. Hey, you gotta move these doors first. <laughs> yeah, but we still have to move the doors. She said, I'm not doing that side like it's my job. I like my friend Carl that I bought those doors from. He's a cool guy. 80 years old and he's still building trucks. I'm gonna guess that you're not doing that properly. Uh, I think it's wrong. I haven't done Okay. Yet. Yeah, open open palm. Don't use one finger because you'll wear a weird spot on it. Nice straight line, no circle. Let's get a 600 grit BA sander on here and see what it does. <laughs> Good about this, Caitlin. I might be happier than a twister in a tornado park. Be happier than a twister in a tor in a tree. <laughs> My tongue's getting all twisted by twister in a trailer park. <laughs> well, here's the plan. I don't have one. Truth is, this thing's taking a whole lot longer than I thought it was going to take to paint. Part of that's because, well, it rains. Uh, a lot here. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not, but the weather here in Ohio kind of stinks. Second most overcast city in the country behind Seattle is Cleveland, Ohio. And we're, um, 
not far from Cleveland. So, uh, you know, we've had two weeks straight of volleyball, soccer, volleyball, soccer, volleyball, soccer for the girls every night, and then weekends uh, full of rain, and then uh, Sundays, of course, we got uh, some things we do on a weekly basis here in our house on Sundays, going to church, and uh, I've been traveling a lot for work, and the fact is, I don't know if it's going to be three weeks or a month between videos when this one finally drops, but um, it's taken a while. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us because, well, we appreciate it. Just going to get some Bondo on some little spots that need some correction on the bed. And uh, I think one little spot here on the truck plus the cab corners. we got to cover the cab corners that we welded in there. But that's what we're using right there. The old can, I don't know, that's probably an eight or nine year old can. We're going to see if it's any good. Alright guys, here's the first round. I'm going to confess something. It's been a few years since I've mixed up Bondo. And I got the little bit too much hardener in there. She started setting up. I did that side. Started setting up about right here. I had to pause and go scrape it off the board, mix up some more. You know, but this is uh, this is really all the bondo that's going to end up being on here, except for these cab corners. These cab corners are going to need uh, cab corners are going to need quite a bit of attention here. But then we'll just. And that'll be bondoed. Well, Glenn's back with his tractor, and uh, I forgot to record it, but you can see we got the bed sitting on some 2x4s, so go back in the garage here, Glenn. Okay. But don't hit the fair lane. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> Who's got the brakes? It's on its way to looking good. It is. Looking good. Guys, I'm just over here looking at this thinking, man, this thing looks like one of those show trucks from the 80s where the hood tilts the wrong way and the bed goes up and flips sideways. And... I'm do a little mini truck show action here with the old C10. That'd be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? Nope. Still got a lot of work to do on the tailgate. I haven't really given much attention to yet. But, you know, as my brother said on the phone this morning, well, what's that, like a 14-hour prep job? I said, yeah, 14-hour prep job that I'm already 18 hours into. Have I mentioned how much I never want to do paint and body again? Guys, we are back in the garage. It is after work. Caitlin is still at volleyball practice. and I'm working a garage door by hand because, well, if one thing ain't broke around here, something else is. And this time, it was my garage door opener. Yeah, belt just snapped. And you can't tell it on the camera, but it's cool today, which means fall is officially here. And I know that not because it's gray and cold, but because I ate my first bowl of soup today for lunch. Tomato soup. Got a whole sleeve of saltine crackers with it. You don't need a whole sleeve of saltine crackers with a can of tomato soup. I, I don't know what kind of barbarian you are, but I don't think I want to meet you in person. Anyways, we are out of time on the truck, that's right. The weather has turned. I was really hoping, really hoping 
to get the paint on this thing out here in the driveway before the temperature fell. And the temperature went on Wednesday from 80 to Saturday, 49. And it is now Monday. And we got basically this week to get paint on this thing because if it doesn't get it done this week, I don't know how it's going to get done. So before Caitlin gets home from soccer or for volleyball practice here in about an hour, maybe less, I'm going to give a last sanding to the couple of touch-up spots that I had to hit here with Bondo. Just a little touch-up. Thin coat is all we're doing. But I'm going to hit them with another 320 grit. I, I did mess up the other day when I put on that new Bondo. I, I didn't mix the hardener in properly and it never dried. It never got hard. Uh, it was it was soft. Anyways, I hit it with her and dug it out and got a new coat in there. So I'm just going to polish this up real quick. We're going to probably blow it off, push it out in the driveway, blow it off, tack it down, wipe it down. We're going to tack it down, get it all cleaned up, get the doors off of it. Finally get this bumper off. Doors off, get the... Uh, get the rubber mold, rubber trim out of the door and uh, go ahead and actually just tape paper the door closed. That way we can go ahead and get the rockers primed and prepped that we haven't been doing because I haven't been wanting to lay on my back down there. That way hopefully over the course of two, maybe three nights this week after school and after sports and all that stuff, Kaylin and I can get the multi-layered paint job on here that we're wanting to put on. So. Hang tight, I promise. We're almost done, and if we're not, I'm just going to end the video anyways. You're never going to see this truck again. We'll push it off a hill somewhere. All right, guys. We have got to get the doors off of here. And so... There's six bolts we got to get out of there. Right off of the hinge, and what we're going to do... Turn my light on here. We've got one, two, three, one, two, three. So there's six bolts gonna come off of there. And, oh, that's interesting. I wonder how, I can't really see that. I wonder how that door was opening and closing. That hinge pin is like way out there. So, huh. Just learned something new about my headlamp, Caitlin. If you move too close to something, it turns it off. Hey, motion activated lights from Modelphi. Um, they sent us these a couple of weeks ago and we have been really enjoying, especially out here at night. Guys, you know as well as I do that there's nothing better than working in the garage with your own kid. One of my fondest memories from my childhood with my dad in the garage and him yelling, keep that light where I can see what I'm doing. We don't have to worry about that anymore, do we, Caitlin? Nope. But our friends over at Odelphi have solved that problem. They sent us over a couple of these super bright LED headlamps. I just take her phone from her, set it right here above where I'm working. Turn that light on for us, Caitlin. She keeps it trained right where I need it. Only thing I've got to worry about is her playing with the motion activated sensor makes a huge difference when you're trying to see how good your bondo and sanding work is to be able to have a light on off on off on off links in the description you can grab one for yourself hey you're not a traffic light <laughs> Sign's not lighting up. The sign's a road sign. It's, it's reflective. Lighting. It looks like it's lighting up. All right, let's get Do what I want. these guys off of here. So Caitlin is taking off the door here. We got the jack underneath it, holding the door so it doesn't sag.
All right, guys, we are gonna get Bondo on our cab corners here. So, yeah, where'd you get that giant screwdriver? That's fine. So, uh, Caitlin has never really done Bondo work. Not sure. But, not sure. Where have you done Bondo work? She's done drywall work with me, which is kind of the same thing. No. But for the sake of time, I have been doing most of the Bondo work here when she's either been at school or volleyball the last two weeks. And you okay there? You know, right? I uh, actually, <laughs> I can't believe you did that. I was just gonna say, the other reason that I've been doing it is because she's a bit of a paint sniffer and uh, I didn't want to be a stumbling block for her. <laughs> She pulls the lid and the first thing she does is what? Sniff it because Bondo smells Big old so sniff good. of Bondo. It smells so good. It does smell good. Mm. So we're going to mix up some Bondo here. Small batches. We're going to mix up just as much as you can use in the time that it's going to be setting up. Put up cheese. Uh, give that a big stir. No, no, no. Not almost we'll scrape the sides. Just stir what's in the bottom. Stir, don't stab. Yeah, I'm okay. So while she's stirring, I'm gonna get our hardener mixed up here because the hardener has a tendency to separate too, and as soon as you open the lid, all everything comes out is just the liquid, not the paste that you need. So, this isn't a science. Um, you already saw that last last week when I was putting Bondo on, I didn't put enough hardener in. I mixed it, I thought it was right, I applied it. Two days later, the hard the bondo still wasn't hard and set up, so I had to dig it out of there with the put a Karen on my sander, which is of course. You said I just had to dig it out with a with a Karen. With a Karen. Yes, yeah. which is 60 grit sandpaper because everybody knows Karen is the human equivalent of 60 grit sandpaper. Are you filming me? Okay, Karen. <laughs> so funny. I think I am funny, but. Uh, I tried to tell a joke on a Zoom meeting the other day, only to find out I'm not remotely funny. <laughs> okay, we all know I'm hilarious. Start here, start here, and come up, laying a thick, thick line. Gotta get all the way, no, get all the way over that seam back there. Okay. I'm foreseeing a lot of sanding and a nope. heavy, no. heavy second coat. No. That was good. Duh. Yep. I'm nope. Sit. I will fix it. <laughs> there. It's good ish. Get the heavy stuff off the corners so we don't have to sand down the edges as much, but... I don't think it's pointed at hand. It is. I went ahead and ground this off one more time. Just hitting the high spots with a with an actual grinder. Corners are the hardest thing to do. And maybe somebody can tell me how to do this differently, but I always just put it on thick around the corner and I sand it back. We've got a seam inside of here that is the product of putting in a new cab corner here. So this is probably going to end up being a first coat. As promised, we are pushing the truck out to get it dusted off. Hey. We got a transmission leak. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the right thing.
can ignore that. But all this sanding and bondo work, this garage looks like Tony Montana's office at the end of Scarface. You think you can take me? Actually, dirtier than a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. Dirtier than my bedroom. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Alright, you get started on the truck. We're just going to wipe it down with some alcohol cleaner and new rags. And I'll get started on sweeping and picking up the garbage in here. Guys, you are not gonna believe this, but I think I've, I've worked on this truck before. I went to take the bumper off and someone had welded the bumper to the mounts. <laughs> that's, 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 that's my move. Guys, I can't even begin to tell you how badly I don't wanna do what I'm about to have to do. But there are two principles that really drive uh, my escapades in the garage. The first is that if it's going to get done, somebody's going to have to do it. And uh, it's probably going to have to be me because I can't pay anybody to do this stuff. And I started down this road with this project with Caitlin and it's going to have to get finished. So number one, it's going to get done. Someone's going to have to do it. Number two, if it needs done, that means it's capable of being done in most cases. And so if somebody else is capable of doing it, there's no reason I can't be capable of doing it. We were really <laughs> primed up and ready to go on painting this thing, putting the first base coat down today. And then we pulled the rubber stripping off last night. It gets worse. I'm I'm gonna have to cut here, come all the way across the top side of this outer rocker, and replace this, rebuild this lip that the rubber molding goes on, and then cut out the inside here around all this rust and repair all that before I can get any of this finished prep for paint. Uh, I didn't know that was there. There's actually a plastic sill piece that goes over here that was covering it and the inner rocker kept me from seeing that when I was looking up underneath it. So this is going to be awesome. We're expecting to lay down paint and instead I'm plugging back in a welder. It's exactly the way this whole project has gone. Two steps forward, 13 steps back. And um, why should today be any different, I guess? I'm not gonna bore you with uh, <laughs> another time lapse, because I know you guys have seen a few time lapses in this episode already. Um, we're just gonna do this. Ready?
A little YouTube trick. No, that didn't work. Man, what is going on here? Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Look at that. We are back, solid all the way through, solid on the inside, seam sealed, got a lip back on there to put our trim on, primed and ready to paint. Flashback. Well, I don't have time to wait on purchasing a new piece to go in and fill that. It's not even a rocker, it's the inner floor pan just around the corner. So I am making one out of a piece of scrap metal that I had here at the house and uh, thought I'd bring you along for it. End of flashback. Good morning, dogs. It is once again a terrible day here in northern Ohio. It's cold. I've got to turn my heater on. Oh, the heater does pretty good. That's a. See, it's plugged into my 220. That's a little, pretty good little heater. That'll get this garage up to about 70 degrees in the next hour or so. Which is great because I'm out of primer. And I've got to go get some gray primer to cover this. And do these front corners once I get the bumper off. Well, we got the bumper off and uh, has nothing to do with that hot slag there and there. Uh, or the fact that right here in the middle of where I'm looking is a big bright spot, can't see anything. Nothing to do with that. Gonna give that valence a quick sand and prep and then prime it. Same thing on the corners here. And I'm waiting on my Bondo to dry here in the door so I can sand that out. And then we can move on. I've never, um, I've never made a piece, a patch piece with a multi-angle curve in it like that. But you can see this piece here, it comes up, it's got a 90, then it goes up, and then it's around, and it's also caved this way. And then this piece comes back here, and it turns both this way towards the door and up with the back. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty easy to please. Six hours later. And I don't know how you guys feel about this, but. That's the color I'm using. Using a oil-based enamel, I'm gonna be putting some hardener in it to harden the coat up. But we're gonna be going black base, red on the roof and the body. I've decided I was gonna do white on top. We're gonna go red everywhere. Um, but you see where the original primer is coming through on the body lines here and here and here. That's what we're gonna do everywhere. We're gonna faux patina this truck and make it look like it has a worn out old paint job. Part of the reason I'm doing that is because I didn't fix all the little dents and dings. I left some of that character. I could have, would have taken a lot more time, 
but I left some of the character. Oh, I gotta get a little bit of primer on that. And uh, got the tailgate done here, that's primed. I'm gonna have to sand it before I paint it, but it's weird. Uh, on this GMC truck, they accidentally put Chevrolet on the tailgate. Weird. I wonder how many of those they made. I bet it's a one of a kind. One of one C10 truck for sale. Ready to paint? Had that little 220 heater running all day in this garage, which is insulated, which is nice. And it is probably, I know, it's probably like 73, 74 degrees in here. And the relative humidity is pretty high this evening. There's like a pretty dense fog laying in right now. I'm looking on my phone. 84% relative humidity, which means this might take a while to dry. I think that's the way it works. Higher humidity, longer to dry. Yeah. All right. So you got your door taped up, right? Yep. It's very abstract. Um, I went, I went this way. Uh-huh. Did, did you see mine? Probably mine probably stinks. I, uh, uh, <laughs> Don't be punching on it. Well, some different approaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, we're using wait, wait. we're using we're using very different techniques for taping a, a door. Yes. When, when, I, when we're done painting, I get to punch the door. Uh, not tonight. Like when, when we're, we're done, done with the, when we're done with the final coat. Yeah. So we're gonna be mixing in a 26 ounce cup. So the paint with the reducer and the hardener. This is a 16 to one mixture. This reducer, the thinner, is an eight to one. So since we have to do 16 parts for the hardener, we have to step this up to a 16 to two. Make sense so far? Okay. So 16 parts, two parts, one part is 19 parts. And that means 26 ounces divided by 19 parts. Lot of boring math later. Gives us like one and something ounces per part. Eight. Okay, I don't have any paint stirrers, so what I do have in your hand is a window shim. Very slowly, gently stir that. It's an oil-based paint, yes. so we don't want to get it all over everything. Bottom. Yeah, you have to get the gunky stuff off the bottom. Can it's a screwdriver or something? No. You can use a wood stirring stick. It's obviously a smaller spray canister than this. I'm not going to try and fill it all the way up to the top. What's the favorite filter for? Filter is just to catch any little thick chunks that may not have gotten Ugh. stirred properly. Those are all bubbles you're seeing. And, or if a fly landed in the paint while it was sitting over here without a, a lid on it. Okay. Now we need to go back. Here's where either all pays off. Like or, it, or it all goes terribly, terribly wrong. Okay, <sighs> last picture before we're all covered in black paint.
Well guys, it's the next day and back in the garage here. I got the first coat of black on. I'm gonna have to do a second coat of black. Um, I was using a new gun. I thought I'd be smart and put old trusty away and get a brand new one for this project. And well, it basically quit working halfway through. Trigger wouldn't pull properly. Um, it just was a wreck. So you can see, I don't know if that's coming through on camera, but it's really thin right there. And then there is an incredible orange peel on this hood. Ridiculous. So, but you can see here it's a little thin. Uh, here it's a little thin. It was just spraying really inconsistently. A little thin right through there. So, we're going to get a second coat of black on today. Even all that out. I think I'm going to do like a, maybe an 800 or 1000 grit. Just a quick surface sand here. Um, it's not quite hard yet. I can still leave a nail print in it if I push. So a couple more hours, I'm sure with the heat on, we'll get it baked up and hardened and then give that orange peel a quick dusting. Working on the doors here, I got them all degreased and ready to, when I put the second coat on here, Hopefully I've got it figured out. I can get a base coat on the doors, on the tailgate, on the windshield valence. And yeah, I'm probably going to paint it right up there on top of the car because it's got a cover on it. No, I won't do that. I'm not totally upset. I went to bed last night pretty upset with the way this hood was looking. But looking at it now, I'm pretty sure I can, I can feather this out. You know, it's one of those things where... Listen, the key to success at stuff like this is knowing just enough to believe that you can do something, but not enough to know why you shouldn't do something. And in this case, I don't know why I shouldn't just keep going. There's probably a few good reasons, but <laughs> I don't know them. Oh, also, this piece of junk's getting thrown out. So I didn't even clean it out last night. I put it up, took the regulator off, and said, you're done, son and retired him so I'm gonna get my new gun at, or my old gun out and uh, get it prepped and ready to go for a second coat of paint it's day 698 of the journey to paint the C10 no just kidding this uh, orange peel is so bad on the hood that I'm gonna have to go ahead and sand it before I put a second coat on most of the rest of the truck did not get orange peeled that badly. I don't know what the deal is on this front end, but I'm gonna have a little bit of work to do on the front fenders. You can see the doors and the tailgate came out really nicely. But that's because, that's because I got out old trusty. That's right. I used a 32 year old spray gun and got a great finish. I used a brand new spray gun from Hobo Freight and got three hours extra work. Good trade-off. Well, we're working on getting this orange peel out of here. And you can see, I don't know how well you can see this here. This side has just been lightly scuffed with some 800 grit paper. And it didn't quite cut through. So this side, I started using a 3M fine Scotch-Brite pad. And you can see it's cutting through that orange peel. Scotch Bright pad is what's getting us. Hi Gracie, say hi. Hi. Where's Caitlin tonight? Uh, volleyball, volleyball game. game. Right. Thousands of tears later. Ooh, look at the shine. Gracie, what do you think? What are you eating? Orange slices. Orange slices are awesome. All right. That looks so much better than the orange peeled mess I had last night. So we ended up cutting through that. A little dent that I left there on purpose and there. Don't worry about those. And a few up there. Don't worry about those. And a few up. Well, there's dents everywhere. Anyhow, we cut through it with a Scotch-Brite pad. Laid down a second coat and it laid out 
Schmoove. So you can see with the light here, good thick coverage all the way around. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. What's the roof look like? Oh yeah. I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours and then get it painted red. Definitely, definitely worth it. Worth the time, worth the effort, worth the lessons learned. I have no doubt we're gonna get all of our money back out of this and then some and be able to move on to the next project. So, Kalen, this has been a struggle. I mean, you talk about getting on the struggle bus. This whole paint thing has been a mess. And this reminds me of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23, that says, In all painful labor there is profit, but mere words from the lips lead only to want. Doing something that's worth doing is always tough work. And uh, in this case, it's paying off big time. I've got one of those mind's eyes that can see what this is going to look like when it's done. And I'm telling you guys right now, you are not going to believe it. So here we go. On to the paint. Okay, now look at the difference in the paint color at the top of the stick versus the color at the bottom of the stick. Get my light back out here so you can see that more plainly. You see that color difference? This is more of what I was looking for. Not as bright red as this. I think we're going to be okay with that. Oh man, we're ready to spray, aren't we? Jeez. <laughs> Last coat and final, well actually first and final top coat Punched. of red is going on here. So don't, don't go breaking your awesome tape job. Better than yours. <laughs> That's arguable. All right, so here's the plan on this bed. We've had it sitting up on some two by fours running under the frame to both hold it off the tire and uh, above the rear bumper that we left on and to give us this space here to work so that we can get in here, spray that all down. Well, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come in here first, spray the back of the cab, the front of the bed, and then before we do anything else, we're gonna pick the bed up and pull those two by fours out and set this thing back down on the frame. Guys, I still got my respirator on, but I am just telling you right now, that paint job just went from like a eight to a maybe a five. I don't know what is going on with this paint, but it is just crackled 
and orange peeled all over. I don't know if I was getting water through my line or what, but I can't believe that. Oh, that's enough to make a guy sick. I am never going to financially recover from this. Holy smokes. I hate paint. I hate paint. 